Sorry about that. I got distracted. In any case, we were working on making the eyes a little bit more 3D. So I use smudge and I drag this part right here over the lashes. Anyway, once you have the smudging, then you can take your dodge or, alternatively, if you want it on a separate layer, wherever you have that linear dodge layer, take a small, teeny tiny brush and pull it across. This will linear dodge it, and once again, you probably want to lighten that up a little bit so it's not so pronounced looks no more than light catching against the bottom of her eye. I sort of do a dotting effect with my pen here. If you remember, I'm using a Wacom tablet. I do a dotting effect to allow for different parts of the highlights to be pronounced. When you back up, her eyes look a little bit more realistic. You can add more lashes if you want, but in this case, I'm going to be doing tears, so I don't want to add more lashes right now. For tears, you probably want to take a dark gray and grab an appropriate sized hard pen here. And we're going to just color this in like that. Maybe draw a little bit of it here. It doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to come back in a minute and fix it more. Now, it doesn't look like much of tears right now, but it will in one minute. Now you're going to take the same layer, and you're going to go to Blending Options, Bevel and Contour. You want to make your blending default, Options Default, or you can actually do this on the layer itself, Overlay or Screen. I'm going to use Screen for this one. And then Adjust Size or depth, or both, until you appropriately feel like they look more like tears. You can adjust the screen up higher and the multiply down lower. And just move it around until it looks like a nice tear to you. Alright, now you can draw some more tears, and as part of my usual, I use smudge to shape. Soft edge, unlike what you used a minute ago to create this tear. Try to remember that a cheek contours in to out, so have your tear or tears moving at that shape. Sometimes it can be difficult getting the contour just right. But it's okay, you have time. You can continue to play with it until you feel you have what you need.
Now if you don't like it, like in this instance, I'm not a fan of this, so I'm going to erase that and I'm going to go with a simple tear. basic. All right. Now we're going to do something else with the brows to make this work better. But in the meanwhile, before we do that, we're going to finish the rest of the editing because to work on the brows, we're going to have to merge things down. Now we can go back to the burn layer again. Remember to change your color back to that dark in this case, we're going to use the darkness of the lips because we are going to part them ever so slightly. You can find it in the corner of the lips or in the middle. And on that layer where you've got burn, just smooth. And darker. Don't worry, we are going to touch this up first with a full opacity. And then not so full opacity, back down to the lower levels. This just gives us a little bit of shadow. Once again, this is all about how you feel about the picture. you want to project. Okay, I have a slight part and I'm going to use that low opacity to get rid of some of the sides here. Just a little bit. Alright, at this point I'm going to merge visible. I've just merged the whole thing down. So my eyelashes, all of this is now attached including the hair that we did earlier. Using a burn tool at a slightly higher, I'm going to blend my, oops, no, not eraser, burn. i am blend my lips just a little bit better. Get rid of that faint line that's lingering. There we go. Alright, now I'm going to go to Filter, Liquify, and I'm going to try to make my brows look a little bit more like we are upset. Voila. A slight lift. Doesn't need to be much. During this time, if I see anything else that I'm not a fan of or that I want to fix, I can. If you have a problem, you do too much. If you look over here, this will put everything back where it once was. Okay, so now we have our saddened red hair maiden. 
and we're ready to put some sort of background. Always remember to use free stock images or to create your own background. In my case, I'm going to use... I'm going to create my own background. Backgrounds can be created multiple ways. In this instance, I'm going to do something more like a um, cloudy sky. Render. So now we have a cloudy night sky behind her. We can lighten that or change the colors. Once again, using brightness, contrast. Note that I'm dropping the contrast this time because that'll give that more of the blurry, soft feel. I'm going to pull out some of the saturation here. go. And we kind of got a stormy sky thing going on in the background. As you notice, I just made another layer and put it beneath our clouds of a different color. I'm going to take that big I'm going to add some spots where the clouds are missing. I'm going to change the color of this as well. Oops. Hue saturation. Let's drop it down and darken it. There we go. Okay. we go. Layer merge down. I'm going to pull up the brightness again. There. Our young lady almost looks like a storm. Alright, this is the end of this one and I will pick up the finished product in the last tutorial for this particular avatar.